Yanda Yalabakai. Retolo Brokon Dalabashataya Labakari and Dayalabasotolabakai. Lord, we worship your name. We glorify you. We give you thanks and praise. We lift up your holy name, O God. For there is no other name. There is no one else we worship but you. You are the true and living God. Holy is your name. Holy are you, O God. High and lifted up in all the earth. I will bless the Lord at all times. Lord, your praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will declare your goodness, O God. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Praise God, praise God, praise God. He is a, an amazing God. He is El Elyon, the Most High God. He is El Gibor, the God who fights on your behalf, the mighty warrior. He is the God who is more than enough. He is El Roy, the God, our shepherd. He is God who is Jehovah Rapha, our healer, our deliverer, and the mender and restorer of our bodies. Aren't you glad that you know the true and living God? God bless you. This is Dr. Titch. Welcome to Couch Time with Dr. Tej as we've been talking about God who is a healer. The miracles continue, the testimonies continue, lives continue to be impacted and I am so glad that we're able to reach you and connect with you through the means of uh, Facebook Live and YouTube and the different digital platforms. Please follow, continue to like, to share, invite people to watch this and they will experience miracles. God will touch them, God will minister to them, and they will experience heaven on earth. And that's what we want. Jesus gave the instruction that we are to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Everyone who believes and is saved shall be saved, and everyone who does not believe shall be damned. So we believe, and we want you to believe in the God who saves, in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. So welcome once again. Share this follow us, subscribe to our channel, and stay connected. We always bring content that will build your faith. Praise God. Now, we've been running a special, and this has been running from the beginning of the lockdown, and this is the wonderful book that is out and available. Oh, sorry. There we go. This book is available for you. Exodus 23, verse 25. It is, right now, you can Give us your email address. I saw some emails that came through late last night, and we were very late, and, but we'll be sending them through. So order yours today as well, and we'll be able to send your book to you, and you will be blessed reading it and studying it. Don't get it because you're sick. Don't get it because you're afraid. Well, if you are afraid and if you are sick, still get it. But get it just to build faith and keep yourself fortified and strengthened in the word of God. Praise God. So this is Exodus 23, 25, a book on healing that God led me and instructed me to write. And I'm sharing from that book and we've been doing that for this whole week. And we've got a couple more days before we go into a different uh, flow and a different direction. So I want to go straight into our, our lesson for today. I said yesterday we're looking at faith and epidemics, faith and epidemics, and right now the epidemic has gone to pandemic levels. It's, um, it's, it's spread out right across globally, and it's hitting localities, local areas, etc. So it, it's, um, we've got the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, when the Lord led me to write the book, it was way before COVID-19. Uh, the Lord had been speaking to me about writing the book on healing as far back as uh, I think two years ago uh, when, when I was diagnosed with high blood pressure and the doctors had told me I needed to be on chronic medication for the rest of my life. And I'm here glad to tell you God healed me. God set me free. I'm free from medication. I'm healed in my body. God is at work mightily in me and I'm so glad that the word became medicine for me. So that's why, that's why God said, you need to share the word, you need to. I've, I've, I've always had a passion to minister healing from as way back as about 24, 25 years ago when I used to do hospital visits, I used to preach on the streets, I used to preach on the taxis, and I used to experience all kinds of miracles. And it was, it was just amazing to come into a hospital 
and there's like 40, 50 people, 80 people sleeping on the beds and on the floor because at that time hospitals in Bulawayo were totally full and overflowing with the sick. And we would get there, preach the word, share the word and begin to lay hands on the sick one by one. And praise God, you come back a day, two days, three days later and the people you prayed for are gone. They're dis discharged. Why? Because God is a healing God. And I'm telling you, you, all you have to do is believe it and believe in faith and take your miracle. The, the faith that we're talking about will get you healed, but it'll also keep you healthy and stay healed. God's best plan for you is to stay healed, stay healthy, stay full of uh, life in your body. But anyway, let's quickly go into our lesson today. Um, I'm reading from the chapter Faith and uh, Epidemics. We live in a world that is greatly influenced by wicked agendas that Satan, uh, from Satan and his kingdom. The kingdom of Satan is, def is a defeated kingdom. Jesus conquered through his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and sitting at the right hand of the Father. He ever lives to make intercession for us. Satan has mastered the art of deception as it was the only way that he can keep people under his influence jesus stated in matthew 24 verse uh, in matthew 24 verse 24 that in the last days shall arise false christ that shall deceive even the very elect paul also writes in second timothy 3 uh, verse 13 that evil men shall arise and grow worse in their wickedness deceiving the people and being deceived themselves and on that basis we know that sickness and disease we've already established in the last few days based on our, our foundational scripture which i will read um, a little bit later in the lesson exodus 23 verse 25 and 26 that uh, we shall worship the lord and he shall bless your bread and your water the primary reason why human bodies get sick is because of substances that have been taken in either through your bread your food or your water it is uh, and and of course that includes your breathing it, it, an interesting statistic that you may find very intriguing is um, the death rate or the number of people dying in china from um, from uh, inhalation of smoke fumes coming from the factories and the industries that are using coal in um, conditions that aren't uh, administered well is way higher than the number of people that have died so far from COVID-19 on an annual basis. Now, with that kind of statistic, you, you would wonder why are we so afraid of COVID-19 when smoke fumes from coal are killing more people. That's why in China they were already wearing masks. A majority of the population were already wearing masks way beyond even COVID-19. Why? Because the, the fumes in, in the air are already toxic and they were already killing literally thousands of people were being killed on an annual basis because of that. But you see, Satan will always come in and and cause you to be afraid of something, bring new bursts of fear so that you are in a place of vulnerability so that he can attack you with other things. When people go into a state of fear or a state of panic, they are no longer rational or, or systematic in their thinking. They become impulsive, they become uh, irrational, they become irresponsible. So don't allow fear, we already spoke about Stop the Fear in an earlier chapter. Don't allow fear to control your decision making. Make your decisions based on what the Word of God says. Praise God. So, men grow wicked and in their wickedness, they begin to use all kinds of wicked means, both to fight against others and secondly, to make money. Global pandemics, the majority, I've, I've done an interesting study of the major pandemics and viruses that we have seen 
uh, coming through over a, a protracted period of time. And you would find that 90% of them were not natural diseases. They were created in laboratories. They were made by human beings that were seeking to either control countries, control continents, control people, cause sickness and disease, cause mass fear, uh, sell a particular pharmaceutical product, etc., or in, in, enhance a certain medical procedure, etc., etc., etc. The wickedness of humanity has caused men to become so wicked that they devise evil and continue to devise evil simply because they want to make money or have control. That's the wickedness of men. And all of this is in the Bible. It's in the Bible. That's the Bible. I'm not talking opinion. I'm not talking so what some people call conspiracy theory. What I'm teaching you is in the Bible. The Bible has always made it clear. That is why you must never base your decisions and your actions on what man says, what the media says. Always base it on what God has said for you. So what should we do in a period of time when there's epidemics and pandemics and global sickness, diseases breaking out and all kinds of attacks economically and war and rumors of wars, etc. When all of this is breaking out, we need to establish our faith and our relationship in God. Why? Because number one, God will protect you. God will sustain you. And the Hebrew boy said, God will deliver us from this fire. But if he does not deliver us, I would rather die having known that I have confidence in God because I know my afterlife is guaranteed. So for the believers, Paul says, for me to die is gain. For me to live is profitable for you. So you need to be in a place where you're not afraid of death. You're not afraid of sickness and disease. You're not afraid of the devil. You have a confidence that I am in Christ. If I were to be absent from the body, I am present with the Lord. The moment you step into that zone, fear begins to lift off. It no longer has power over you. Glory to God forevermore. But let's read a couple more scriptures and build our faith and as we get ready to, the, to get to a place of prayer. I want to give you three keys of what to do when pandemics, epidemics, and breakout of sickness and disease is rife and all around you. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 13, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For, pardon me, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers and against authorities and against cosmic powers over this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Now you see, God is giving us wisdom here. There are evil days. There are wicked spirits. There are demonic authorities and entities that are operating in the world today. Now, it's important for me to say this so that I clarify something. Whether a disease is spiritual, there are some diseases that are spiritual. A lot of uh, some of the cancers are spiritual. Any disease that doctors will try and trace through machines and scans and cannot trace it, you must know it is spiritually sponsored. When the demon leaves, the condition also desists from operating. Acts chapter 19, the word of God tells us, God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul that handkerchiefs and aprons that were taken from his body to those that were sick and diseased. The Bible says, and the, and the evil spirits went out of them and the diseases departed. So when the evil spirit left, the disease did not have a sponsorship to sustain it. So it would shrivel away. But there are some diseases that are chemical oriented. Uh, you, uh, some of you would know that during, during the, the apartheid times, um, one of the things that was being used was chemical warfare, where chemicals were being put in water that was being directed to black communities. Black communities were drinking water that was, that was laced with certain chemicals that would enhance certain conditions. And I don't want to go into the detail of all of that. That also happened during the slave trade. That also happened in certain countries where 
uh, water sent or uh, water uh, channeled through pipes to certain communities had certain poisons or chemicals that enhanced sickness, disease, or enhanced uh, addiction to substances, to alcohol, etc., for the purposes of gain of control and manipulating people. All of this has been common in history. If you study history, you'd learn all of this. So when it comes to chemical, it's a different function to a demon. However, the reason there is somebody putting poison in a water system that is feeding people is because that person is already influenced by demons. So whichever way it is, Ephesians makes it clear that there are wicked spirits, there are demonic powers, there are wicked principalities that are in operation in the world today. So as a child of God, in order to protect yourself, you must stay in faith because you don't know what's being put in your water. You don't know what's being put in your bread. You don't know what's being put in your, in your soft drinks or sodas that you're drinking. You don't know what's being put in your milk. All of the, I mean, every so often we discover that Companies are, are, are sending apologies and saying, we're so sorry, the batch that we sent of this, I mean, you remember last year we had the issue of the cold meat and the ham and the polonies and so on. A whole batch poisoned a whole lot of people and all the companies do is send an apology saying, sorry, we made a mistake, but hey, I've already eaten your food. My son died, my child died, my family member has been affected. All they do is give you an apology, but what can you do? Stay in the word. That's why you must not eat food, drink stuff without giving thanks, without worshiping the Lord, without being in a position of faith. Praise God. So there are wicked spirits that are operating, causing people to create, manufacture poisons, chemical warfare, etc., etc., designed to harm you. You stay in the word. You don't get afraid now thinking, oh, is there poison in this? Is there poison in this? You live your life being led by the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit tells you not to touch something, not to eat something, then by all means, follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. But if you give thanks to the Lord, the Bible says you shall drink poisonous, deadly things, and they shall not harm you. That is a divine promise from the Lord. Amen. We know that we are from God. This is 1 John 5, 19. We know that we are from God and the whole world lies under the power of the evil one. The whole world, anything that is not in Christ, anything that's not serving God, is under the influence of Satan and must always be treated that way, must always be handled with great caution. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, In their case, the God of this world blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of glory of Christ, who is the image of God. God, praise God. And so we see here God is making it clear that the world has been blinded and cannot see the truth of the gospel. So we uh, just to read a couple of sentences here in the book for you, we need to be aware of Satan's strategies, but not afraid of him. We need to have faith in God's power to save us and to protect us from the enemy. This is why we have so many covenant promises of protection and preservation. What I want to focus on in this chapter is how you can respond when Satan uh, is on the attacks. Epidemics, plagues, pandemics, viruses, and all manner of sickness and disease will break out among upon the earth. But when this happens, we are not to be moved. We are encouraged by the word of God to resist the devil and that will destroy his plans and stop them. So it says, uh, then it gives us a scripture, 1 Peter 5, verse 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same suffering is experienced by the brotherhood in the world. So Satan is going around seeking whom he may devour. You are not one of them. 
You're a child of God. You're a child of promise. You're a child of covenant. God's given you covenant promises and covenant rights that enable you to have victory over Satan. Praise God. So all you have to do is remind yourself, I'm a child of God. I'm born again. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. The word of God is at work in me and I claim every promise that God has given uh, to me. Praise God. Our scripture, Exodus 20. Uh, okay, yeah, Exodus 23, verse 25 to verse 26. I want to read this in the contemporary Jewish Bible. You are to serve Adonai, your God, and he will bless your food and water. I will take sickness away from among you. In your land, your women will not miscarry. Praise God. Or be barren and you will live out the full span of your lives I want to give thanks to the Lord right there let's pause and just have a, a 30 second praise break father I bless you for this scripture I bless you for this divine promise glory to your holy name as we bless you as we worship you you said you will bless our bread and our water you will take sickness illness disease away from our midst and there will be no barren woman in our midst and none will miscarry and the length of our days you will fulfill I give you praise for this promise. I give you glory, Father, that your word is true. Your promises are yes and amen. And you cannot lie. You are the Lord and you change not. This promise is true and it is steadfast for us today as it was the day it was written. Glory to God forevermore. Amen. First and most important thing to do when pandemics, epidemics come. And this, whether it is COVID-19 or a measles outbreak at your child's school or polio or mumps or lice or whatever it is if you will follow these three principles you will be safe what should we do when pandemics epidemics break out of sickness and disease water poisoning food poisoning uh, when something is contaminated what should we do here's what you have to do number one the first and most important key is in living for in victory is worship worship we were created to serve god man was created to worship god this means to honor god and to keep him at the center of everything you do if you're a worshiper you're protected and one of the things that i always find interesting when we talk about worship in in the typical christian sense worship is singing songs to the lord and saying i worship you lord and that is a part of worship but it is not the complete package of worship worship is how we live our lives on a consistent basis is god the center of your job the center of your marriage the center of your family the center of your finances the center of your lifestyle the center of your language if you allow your mouth to speak foul language you're opening up your life to demonic oppression the first sign of demonic oppression and demonic attack in your life is when your words are corrupted and filled with negative and foul language that's an open door for demonic activity in your life so you need to manage that that's part of worship worshiping and singing but in also our finances, are you a tither? Are you a giver? And a lot of believers kind of debate this because we're looking for an opportunity to give the least amount to God as possible, as opposed to being covenant-focused people that are seeking to give as much as we can. So we debate over the issue of tithing and giving and offerings, etc. But you know, in the Jewish context, when they talk about the Shema, the central truth in Judaism, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, and you shall love the Lord your God in with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. In the Hebrew Bible, it says with all your resources. So my act of giving worship to God includes my tithing and my offering. Your worship is in without tithing your worship is incomplete without giving to the Lord so worship when he says you shall worship the Lord he's saying keep God at the center of your life that's why Abraham was able to be in Egypt and the Egyptians had a plague that plagued them for taking his wife but the plague didn't touch him why he was a covenant man he was protected by the Lord. And we see that right through the Bible. In Egypt, when, when the children of Israel were in Egypt and the plagues started to come, all the plagues except the last one, they were protected 
automatically, the nine plagues, they didn't come to Goshen. God protected them. It was just the last one when God said, I want you to put the blood on the door posts of your homes and that, that has a whole significant and prophetic uh, flow to it that we don't even have time to, 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 to explain the why but God protected them the plague broke out in all of Egypt but did not come near them the fleas broke out everywhere flies frogs everything but it did not come to Goshen God supernaturally protected the worshippers praise God the second let me jump over here to the second element, the second key to overcoming plagues, pandemics, epidemics, is faith in the Word of God. God has promised us in His Word over and over and over again. Now, right from the beginning of the lockdown, the Lord laid it on our hearts to do what we call days of faith. And my wife has been running sessions. If you need to boost your faith, build your faith, you better join her every single day at 1 o'clock. She has, she has done uh, 15, 20 minute sessions of building your faith building your faith why why should you constantly be hearing the message of faith some people have said no faith is is not so important hey, the bible says without faith it is impossible to please god so you can be strong in everything else and not have faith and your life is not pleasing to god you must have faith faith means a divine connection he that cometh to god must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him so you must keep faith in your heart. Kenneth Hagin always used to say this and I love and enjoy his teachings even up until now after he's gone home to be with the Lord. He always used to say keep the switch of faith turned on. So never switch off your faith and say now I'm okay. It's like now because there's a pandemic oh, we, we need masks and we need gloves and we need sanitizers. We need to stay healthy. Okay when, when COVID-19 goes and there's no longer a threat are you going to stop washing your hands staying clean? making sure you you keep a clean environment no keep your health standards up but in the same way keep your faith turned on always stay in the word and keep your faith built up and then the third key very important is the key of understanding the power of communion now notice i didn't say have communion i said the key of understanding the power of communion. The blood of Jesus has power to separate us from the rest of the world and protect us from sickness and disease. When the final plague was come upon Egypt, the angel came and told them, put blood on your doorposts for protection because the angel of death will be rebuked and will stay out of your home. So it was the understanding of what they were doing. God gave them specific instructions of what they were to do. And, and like I mentioned earlier, it is very deeply prophetic because it was talking about Israel getting born again, coming through the, the womb and coming into their realization. And the first thing that happened as they came out of the womb of the doorposts that had blood all around was they were given they were given freedom, they were given wealth, they were given prosperity, they were given long life. The Bible says none of them were sick feeble as they went through the wilderness except when they sinned and the serpents came and bit them and some of them died so it was a divine covenant promise of health and long life praise god as we get ready to close i want to start praying with you now so it's number one you must worship you shall worship the lord your god and he will bless your bread your water your oxygen he will bless the environment around you so that sickness disease will not come near and you keep your faith up how do you do that stay in the word you also have a a revelation and an understanding of what communion is so that you're able to activate the supernatural protection of God we read a scripture yesterday uh, when Paul writes about communion telling the church that I'm giving to you that which the Lord gave to me that in the same night when the Lord was taken up, he gave the instruction, he took the bread, and after he gave thanks, he took the wine. And then he says this, very interesting. He says, some of you are eating and drinking damnation to yourself. And because some of you are eating the Lord's Supper and drinking the blood of the Lord without understanding what you're doing, he says, some of you are weak, some of you are sick, and some of you are fallen asleep. That means dead. 
So there were people that were weak in their walk with God, in their relationship with God. There were people that were sick and there were people that were dead because they didn't have a revelation of the Lord's Supper. Do you understand what the Lord's Supper is? Do you understand what taking communion means? Do you understand what you're doing when you're taking? Because sometimes it's easy to do it out of religion. Oh, okay, at our church, they make us drink this little little, little tiny cup of, of red juice or some, some churches still use uh, wine, whichever. It's, it's, I, I don't want to bring that up right now. But we get so hung up with, oh, it's a nice little cup and a, a tiny little piece of bread. But we don't realize that God was actually giving us a very powerful precedent that every time you have a meal at your table with your family, breakfast, lunch, supper, that's what he was talking about. That that moment of eating was a moment of remembering. It was a moment of worship. It was a moment of thanksgiving. It was a moment of reminding yourself and reminding God of his promises concerning the works of my hands command ye me. We are to remind God of his promises through worship. So as we receive our meals, as we receive dinner, breakfast, lunch, whatever it is, we must remember that I am eating the Lord's body. I am drinking the Lord's blood. Why? Because I've given thanks to the Lord for it. I've worshipped, I've, I've ministered to the Lord for that meal. But anyway, I need to close now. My time is up. But thanks be unto God. Don't forget the book is on special. All you have to do is give us your email address. Give us your email address. Inbox me. Send me details. And we will send it to you. We've already been sending out quite a number of them. There's over 1,200 copies of this book circulating as a free gift. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be a blessing to over 1,200 and with some of the books families are sharing and people have sent to their families and their friends and that for me is so encouraging this book is going right across the, the, the continent and many lives are being touched but right now I want to minister to you the, the anointing is in the studio and the presence of God is right here as we just take a minute to worship the Lord we'll turn up the music a little bit and just begin to worship and minister to the Lord and just allow the glory of God to flow through this camera to flow through the internet to flow through the waves and reach you right now father we worship you oh how we worship you Lord how we worship you begin to worship him right there where your eyes sense the anointing beginning to flow somebody's head is being healed right now headaches are being rebuked right now in the name of Jesus high blood pressure is being healed right now in the name of Jesus keep worshiping the Lord father we worship you we give you glory we magnify your holy name oh we worship you we worship your bladder infection is being healed right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Kidneys are being healed right now. Somebody's kidney is being healed right now. I sense the anointing flowing in the name of Jesus. Right here in the studio, the power of God is flowing right now. I sense heaven is ministering to people. Begin to receive your miracle. I don't know what it is. I told you yesterday that you can begin to thank God for particular conditions. Begin to thank God and worship and minister to the Lord. He is a healing God. Father, I worship you. You are high and lifted up. You are our healer. You are our bread and our life. You are the sustainer and the giver of life. I worship you tonight. I magnify you, O oh Lord. With long life, you will satisfy us and show us your salvation. Thank you for the word that has gone forth. Your word declares that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let faith arise in our hearts. Let faith arise in the hearts of your people. Let faith arise to take and possess and aggressively take what belongs to us. Oh, like they sang the beautiful song, the glory is here. The glory is here. I can sense his very presence in the very atmosphere. So whatever you may need, just reach out right now. Just reach out and receive and say it's mine. Say it's mine. Say it's mine. Take it right now. Maybe it may not be physical healing. You need a financial miracle. You need a breakthrough in your business, in your, in your job, in your career. Just begin to worship the Lord and say, God, 
I trust you. I trust you. I lean upon you. My confidence is in the Lord. My trust is in the Lord. The God of miracles is right there where you are. There's a beautiful song we used to sing long ago. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And oh, soon the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Right now the glory of God is flowing. Receive it in the name of Jesus receive the peace of God the shalom of God somebody anxiety anxiety God is saying don't be anxious my child there's a woman you've been you really been troubled about your children about your children your family God says be at peace peace be still fear not do not be anxious do not be worried trust me and allow me to work on your behalf and I will bring peace in the midst of the storm, says the Lord. Be at peace. Be at peace. God is at work right now. God is at work right now. Oh, Lord, we give you thanks and praise and honor and glory for your faithfulness. God of miracles. God with whom nothing is impossible. We join our faith right now. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. And now allow me to minister to you. I rebuke sickness in the name of Jesus. I rebuke disease right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke chronic conditions in the name of Jesus. Your word says, who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a sheep before his sharer is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. You are healed. Infirmity, loose my brother, loose my sister. Let them go right now. That child, that baby that is being tormented by pain and discomfort and discoloration of the skin, I command that Go in the name of Jesus. I command you to loose that baby. In the name of Jesus, loose every sick person. Loose them and let them go. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We glorify you that healing is the bread of the children. Thank you for ministering healing to us. We believe it. We receive it. And we thank you in advance. In Jesus' name mighty name praise god praise god praise god praise god forevermore i don't know what it is you're experiencing what it is that god is doing for you right now but i want you to know god is a healing god put your faith your confidence in his word and his word will never fail you i love you this is dr titch and we are so glad for you joining us in couch time with dr titch join us again tomorrow tomorrow morning we've got our service nine o'clock and we are talking on increase, a brand new series. I'm looking forward to it. But in the evening, yeah, we're going to have the same time, same space. We're going to have couch time and we continue talking about the supernatural power of healing. How to minister healing to somebody. Thank you so much. God bless you. Have a great evening.